knowing Jesus can work it out. Whatever it is, Jesus can work it out. Have the faith and believe Jesus can work it out. We're going to come back to that. Yes, Lord. First and foremost, I want to say happy Father's Day to all of the men who are fathers, who have been father figures, who are mentors, who have loved children that were not even yours biologically, but in your heart, those are your children. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for being fathers. Thank you for being really present in the lives of those around you. Thank you for being the strong person, the protector in your home, in your community, in your family, at your job. Thank you, fathers, for being fathers. To all our men here at Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church, we love you. We have a special tribute for you that's going to be coming today at 2 p.m. And we ask that you share this with all of your friends, all of your family. And for those who are not members of Mount Vernon, we say happy Father's Day to you as well. We want you to continue virtually worshiping with us every Sunday, 9.30 for Sunday school, 10.45 for our morning worship. We want you to continue worshiping with us as we do a recharge on Thursdays and we still give the spiritual Bible feeding and study on Tuesdays. So we want to invite you all in, all the fathers around the world, because we do have people who are following us and watching us and worshiping with us from literally all over the world. So welcome to Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church. I am Sister Twanish Glass. I am so honored to be here. I'm humbled that God allowed me to be here. I'm so already full of praise. Let's just start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for being a God of a second and a third and a fourth chance. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for the fathers, Lord. Thank you for the real men that step up and are fathers and mentors, Lord. Lord, continue to strengthen them, continue to just provide wisdom, continue, Lord, to just bless them. Bless their family, bless their spouses and their children. Lord, bless them, bless their grandchildren, their nephews. And Lord, bless those that are love, they, they love, but might not be biological, Lord, but they are still their children. Lord, we just want to say thank you right now. Thank you to all of the fathers, Thank you for all the shepherds of the churches, Lord, the men that are shepherding this morning that are fathers. Lord, we just ask that you just put a hedge of protection around everybody, Lord. Lord, we ask right now that you give everyone traveling grace and mercy. Lord, we ask everyone, we ask that everyone be safe, Lord. Please protect your people today as people are now coming outside and getting out a little bit more. Lord, please protect them. Lord, as I decrease, Lord, I ask you to increase, Jesus. It is never about me. It is always about you, Lord. Lord, use me as your vessel. Lord, I praise your holy name. I praise you in advance, Lord. I thank you in advance, Lord. I worship you in advance, Lord. Thank you for being God all by yourself, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings, because we know from which they flow from you. Thank you, Lord. Be with us. Be in us. Amen. This morning, as we continue the lesson for this quarter on wisdom. Wisdom is something that we believe is just the simplest thing. Wisdom teaches us. Wisdom instructs us. Wisdom protects us. Wisdom guides us. So this morning, we're talking about the gifts of wisdom. Last week, we spoke on, last week, we spoke on when our own brother, Gondoli Sullivan IV, did just a phenomenal job on the value of wisdom. And today, we're going to be talking about the gifts of wisdom. 
Our scripture reference is Proverbs 8, starting with the 8th verse, going to 14, and then picking back up 17 through 21. And our devotional reading comes from the book of Job, 28, 12 through 28. So once again, our printed text is coming from Proverbs, the 8th chapter, 8 through 14 verses, and then picking back up 17 through 21. But you already know, I'm going to ask you to read the entire chapter. Read the entire book. We have to understand the importance of reading all of the material so that we can gain a better understanding of God's word. Our aim for change this morning is coming uh, from this lesson, and it is, by the end of this lesson, we will recognize the incomparable value of wisdom, appreciate the difference between the rewards of wisdom and the rewards of mere wealth, and pursue godly wisdom rather than a substitute. I like that last one. Pursue godly wisdom rather than a substitute. And we have what's called in focus, and our in focus question asks us, wisdom is more than just information. How can we take in what God has to teach us and find wisdom? I will be reading from the New Living Translation this morning, so if you would like to follow along in your Bibles, we are reading from the New Living Translation. My advice is wholesome. There is nothing devious or crooked in it. My words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those with knowledge. Choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. All who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. Common sense and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. I love all who love me. Those who search will surely find me. I have riches and honor, as well as enduring wealth and justice. My gifts are better than gold, even the purest gold. My wages better than sterling silver. I walk in righteousness in paths of justice. Those who love me inherit wealth. I will fill their treasures. Now, it's interesting that our keep in mind verse is coming from verses 10 through 11 that says, choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. Now, it's interesting, we started a new Bible series teaching this week on pride and the pitfalls of pride. So I want you all to look at verse number 13. And remember, our pride series is on Tuesdays. Please make sure you're checking it out because we have to understand about the pitfalls of pride and God is not like a prideful spirit. So look at verse 13. It says, all who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. Now, this is very interesting as we are starting at the beginning. We are starting with verses 8 and 9. And when we're looking at 8 and 9, it starts off by saying that my advice is wholesome. 
Now, this is interesting in the book of Proverbs because wisdom here is the speaker. So wisdom is talking in third person. So this is actually wisdom speaking. But what I want us to recognize is that wisdom is parallel with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when we look in at this and we know wisdom is talking in third person from King Solomon, but we want to also recognize that Jesus is the parallel. So when it says, my advice is wholesome, there's nothing devious or crooked in it. That's Jesus. Jesus' advice is wholesome. There's nothing devious or crooked in it. Jesus' words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those with knowledge. So now it is very interesting that when we're looking at wisdom, and we mentioned earlier about Solomon, that Solomon is the person in the Bible that we recognize the most associated with wisdom. Now, if you all recall in 2 Chronicles, in the beginning of his reign, Solomon, God asked him, you know, what, basically, what can I do? And he could have asked for jewelry, rubies, silver, gold, cars, houses, unlimited wealth. He could have asked for all of those things, but instead, he asked for wisdom to rule over God's people and knowledge. And God was pleased at his request and granted him wisdom, and he also gave him some riches of the land. And what's interesting, I want us to remember, as we are talking about that wisdom, when we're really talking about wisdom, we're talking about being a, like a sponge. We're soaking in the knowledge. We're soaking in making sure that the decisions that we make are being made for the right reason. We're making sure that the decisions that we're making are for God's glory and we're not making decisions for man's glory. We're making sure when we're asking God for wisdom that we want to make decisions. We want to live our lives. We want to make sure that what we're doing is pleasing to God. And we also ask God for wisdom so that we can show our humility and our humbleness to God so that God can direct us. And that is an area that some of us struggle with. We have to trust God when we ask God for wisdom and then we're realizing today in this scripture and in this teaching that there are gifts of wisdom. So when we're saying, Lord, please grant me the wisdom to make a decision in your home, to make a decision with your children, to make a decision on your job, to make a decision in your church, to make a decision in your community, to make a decision with your government. What we're asking for is God, you lead us. That's what you are asking for. You're asking God to lead us. So now when we're looking at this is that we're saying when you are looking for somebody with wisdom, and when you are seeking the knowledge and you're seeking wisdom, what is the root of why you're asking that person wisdom? What is the root of you asking for that knowledge? And what I sat there and I thought about as I was going over my lesson this morning, as I was looking and I was reflecting, is that if we could literally Literally, if you think about this, how much would you pay for? Literally, how much would you pay for to have a one hour? And we're talking about getting wisdom, seeking wisdom. If you could get one hour, I'm going to give you some examples of some individuals. How much would you pay to have one hour with President Barack Obama? How much would you pay to have one hour with Bill and Melinda Gates? with Warren Buffett, with the Pope, with Nelson Mandela? How much would you pay for Bishop Desmond Tutu? How much would you pay to have one hour with Mother Teresa? How much would you pay to have one hour with someone whose knowledge 
and who you know has wisdom that can actually be a benefit for the greater good. So when I look at just those are just a few examples, how much would you pay? That would be priceless. And regardless of the cost, you know that the time spent with any of those individuals that I just named, because those names are more that we all know of internationally, we all know, but we also have members here in our body of Christ that we can sit down with also to seek wisdom and understanding. And we always ask God to direct us and lead us to individuals. And it's interesting because the wisdom with the individuals that I named off, the wisdom you would share with uh, Nelson Mandela, Bishop Desmond Tutu, Mother Teresa, the Pope, the, 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 the sit there and just soak in the knowledge and the wisdom you would literally just soak in everything like a sponge. Now, as much as I love admiring people and giving respect where their, their, uh, their, that is due, none of the individuals that I mentioned pale in comparison to the wisdom of God. God's word is true. God's word is the blueprint. God's word gives us the instruction. So as much as we would love to have a sit-down conversation with President Barack Obama, as long as we, if we could sit down and speak to President Nelson Mandela, if we could sit down and speak to a Mother Teresa, it would be phenomenal and just humbling to sit there and soak in. There is none wiser than God. And God gives us the blueprint with the Bible. He gives us the instructions with the Bible. He gives us the wisdom in the Bible to know the difference between right and wrong. He gives us the understanding of how we should live a righteous and holy life. The Bible teaches us this. God gives us this for free. All we have to do is just seek God and ask God. As many of you know, one of my favorite Bible verses is Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So before you do anything, seek God first for the wisdom so God can help you in any decision that you are making. And so when we're looking at that God's word is wholesome, God's word is pure, when we're looking at verse 8, God's word is plain and understanding to those who want to receive and have knowledge. And those who want to find knowledge. So now what we're looking at is that God's book of wisdom tells us this morning that he will always speak the truth. God hates everything deceitful and anything that's corrupt. And remember a couple of Sunday school lessons ago, we talked about God doesn't like funny business especially with God's people, especially on holy ground, especially with this world. God does not like any funny business. So he's saying that he does not have any part of deceitful and corruption and crooked behavior. God is saying that's not what I'm about. So now when we look at what's going on even in the world right now and watching the news and you just hear about all the widespread corruption, everything that's going on in the world right now, all the current crises, because there are more than one that we are currently facing, is that this world right now is going to be dealing with corruptive behavior, corruptive government, corruptive people, corruptive leaders, corruptive CEOs of company. And we can even go as far as to say those who are saying that they are in the word of God. Because the Lord teaches us about false prophets, false teachers, false pastors and bishops and all those other people. We talk about those too. God's word is pure. And as you learn God's word and as you get a right relationship with God's word, you will be able to discern all the deceitful crookedness because you know it's going to go against the word of God. So now, when we know there is no deception, deception or corruption in God, now, that doesn't mean that sometimes people fall. 
It doesn't mean that sometimes you get tricked and moved over. It doesn't mean that. But God also blesses us and gives us a second chance as we humble ourselves, repent, and turn away from sin, turn away from the deceitful behavior, turn away from crookedness. God understands about temptation. He understands what happens and that we, uh, people mislead us, and we're going to discuss that further as we go down in the scripture. Now, it's interesting right now when he's saying, my words are plain to anyone that has understanding. Now, in 10, it says, choose my instruction rather than silver, and knowledge rather than gold. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare to it. Wisdom is better than silver and gold and rubies. And what is so interesting is even Satan tempted Jesus. I will give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. That's the same materialistic thing. That's the same same spirit that's floating around right here with the temptations. If you do this, then now I will. You do this, I will give you this. If you do this, and see, if Satan comes in, we already know to attack your mind. So we already understand that when we are living in this world, when we are tempted with gold and jewelry and diamonds and pearls and silver, and we can have all these other things, but it goes against the will of God, it takes us from the will of God. We have to know that the wisdom and the knowledge of God is a gift, and we need to turn away from the temptation that's making us believe that these materialistic things are better than God. Gold and silver and rubies and diamonds are not better than God. And newsflash, everybody, God created the rubies and the diamonds and the things that you worship being materialistic, so how do you worship something and not the creator of it. I'm going to let you think about that. You're worshiping something that God created. So when God says, seek ye first, making sure we seek wisdom from him, is better than rubies and gold. It is absolutely no, it's just no, no reason that we don't understand as Christians that Satan likes to go around tempting people tempting people with how to make money the wrong way. So what, what he looks for is an avenue to get into your life. He looks for that area where something's going on with your bills. Or he's looking for that area where you had something happen and it could have been because of a poor decision. It could have been because you were laid off. It could have been because something happened and you are now having financial crisis after financial crisis and you feel like giving up. So now you're looking for any means necessary to fix this problem. Satan disguises himself as a light to help solve your problem. So that's when you get the temptation to do wrong things. I heard that you've been having some money problems if you drop this package off of me. It's nothing in the package. I can give you a couple of hundred dollars each week if you just drop this off me. I know you need the money. Well, you know, if you do this thing over here for me, I'll give you some money, and we can go ahead and do that. Can you do that little thing? I know you need some money. I heard about what's going on with you. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're not going to get caught. These are the conversations that you have. And depending on the level of the desperateness that you're going through, that's where the temptation comes in. We have to always understand that Satan will always try to remove us from God because he's been removed from God. Mm -hmm. So never let anyone tempt you with, I can make sure you have the best car. Mm -hmm. I can make sure you have the best house. I can make sure that when everybody sees you, they're envious of you because you have diamonds and pearls and jewelry and rubies. And now your focus is on letting everybody see all this materialistic things that you have and that you are worshiping instead of worshiping God. So now all of a sudden when we're looking at this, it says for wisdom is far valuable than rubies. So now it means realistically that you have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. When we literally and truthfully receive and apply God's wisdom, we are better equipped 
to avoid the pitfalls of life. Remember, Paul teaches us that love for money causes all kinds of evil. That's in 1 Timothy 6 and 10. Having money is not the problem. Solomon was the richest man, at, she was well, known as being one of the richest men. His wealth could make everybody nowadays probably look real bad. But the issue is when money controls you. So when we're saying right here about wisdom is better than value than rubies and pure than gold and silver, you need to put the word money in there for modern day right now. Because what we have un because of temptation and because we have to now make sure we're strong is that we have allowed money to control us. We have allowed money to become our God. We have allowed money to take over us. Those who pursue money as their main focus in life wind up either getting it and it's never enough. Because once you get money, you need more money. Now I need more money. I need more money. So now you gotta make sure that you don't fall victim to the greedy spirit. So now I want more, I want more, I want more. We are taught to be content. If the Lord can't trust you with $5, how can he trust you with $500? We sit here saying that in verses 10, 11, and now we're uh, introducing 12 now about good judgment. I know people, where to discover knowledge and discernment. We have to understand that we should never be in a compromising position because we allow materialistic things to now control us. It is so many pitfalls that we fall into when we allow money to control us. One of the biggest problems we face, and we did a lot up here at Mount Vernon, financial literacy. We made sure we had people available. We want to continue doing that for all our members that are around the world, our friends and family that are around the world, you should just encourage financial literacy training as a young child and keep that training going on in your sanctuary, in your congregation, because financial literacy helps us as we become better stewards of God's money, but it helps us as we are growing in Christ and allow the wisdom of Christ to allow us to be better stewards of God's money. The financial problems that we run into, the financial problems that we have, when we turn around and allow ourselves to go poor, trying to impress other people, we are literally buying cars that we cannot afford just because we're trying to impress people that are not even impressed. We are buying houses that we can't afford because we're trying to impress people. We are turning around here, literally and truthfully, somebody can bring home $1,500 every two weeks from a paycheck and will go and spend $1,000 on a purse so they feel that everybody knows I have this purse, but now my bills are not being paid, now my car is being repossessed, now my house is having this problem because I chose to have a love of these materialistic things so that I can have a pride spirit of bragging. Now, what I want to make sure we don't confuse, there is absolutely nothing wrong with having nice things. There is nothing wrong with you having a nice home and a nice car. But what you have to make sure of is that you ask God to direct you, direct your whole life, direct your finances, so that it does not become your God. And let God give you the wisdom on how to have these things. If you all recall, I mentioned earlier about Solomon. Solomon asked for wisdom to lead God's people. He asked God, I need you to help me. I need your wisdom so that I can be a great leader. And the Lord blessed him with exactly what he asked for, and he also gave him some riches of the land. So allow God to show you how to do it the right way. That's why we don't want to have these pitfalls that we constantly fall victim to when we are operating outside the will of God and we're operating in our own prideful, arrogant spirit, which is what we were talking about in verse 13. We cannot allow our pride and arrogance to go against God's will for our life. We have got to understand that this word right here, you seek wisdom. One of the biggest examples that I want to share with everyone 
is when we have, and I want to make sure that I give a good analogy where I believe everybody can understand. You have sports celebrities, sports players in the different sports, million dollar contracts, multi-million dollar contracts. If they get injured and unable to play anymore, I want to repeat myself, they have million dollar contracts. If they hurt themselves and are unable to play, or they retire, and now years later you hear about them being flat broke. How do you have million dollar contracts over and over again, and now because you chose to go out and just buy everything for everybody, because you never sought seeking wisdom from a financial advisor, you didn't seek wisdom from maybe a CPA, and you definitely didn't seek wisdom from God. Because when you seek wisdom from God, God helps you manage your money so that not only will God make sure and increase your territory, he will teach you and show you how to be a blessing to everybody around you. One of the best examples of that, you all, is the story, you all understand the true story of Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is one of the best rags to riches stories we have ever heard. But I'm going to tell you what Tyler Perry did. Tyler Perry, of course you all know, he slept in his car, he had three or four jobs, but he had a vision for his play. Lord, I know I've been changed with his play. It didn't work the first time. He had to go in, do the work, live in his car, which made him homeless. Then turned around, and now he got a, a, a second chance at getting it right and he honors God. So now he turns around and is a blessing in his community because what Tyler Perry has done is he's given opportunity for others. He has employed people on his payroll. He has opened up opportunities. He has turned around and grew the uh, careers and the success of other people. But what's most important is that he owns. Let me make sure we all understand that. He's not renting, he's not leasing, he owns his own film and production studio. So now he got the wisdom in how to make sure that he can now make sure he's a blessing to those and he owns his own studio. So now his money works for him. And you all really should look at that. When you have a situation in your life when now you are trying to figure out how do I do this? How do I do that? The sports star who just blew all his money, and there's so many examples of that. They blew the money on gold and diamonds and necklaces and cars. They blew the money on houses. They blew, and the second that those millions that they could have been investing, those millions that they could have made sure that they learned how to work and it could have benefited for everyone, it could have been where when they chose to retire, they could have owned the team. But the wisdom is what they were missing. So now you have million dollar players who are now flat broke. We have to understand God does not like, in verse 13, it teaches us about pride and arrogance. God does not bless you for you to be prideful, for you to be arrogant. He does not bless you. If God blesses you, he blesses you to be a blessing to others. That's what wisdom is about. Solomon's wisdom is about leading people as leaders in your home, in your church, at your job. The wisdom that you should ask God. If you are head of a ministry, if you are pastor of a church, you need to see God's wisdom. If you are in a leadership position at your job, in the community, in the government, international, seek God's wisdom to lead God's wisdom people. So what does that mean? It means in recapping, if you can't handle five dollars, how can God give you a million dollars? How can he give you a million dollars if you can? Now as we go on, and I always tell people this, it's nothing wrong with having nice things, but it's more important that we seek God first, which is our humility and it Seeking God first is how we turn around and show God that we have fear and reverence for him. God can trust you with things, with money, if he knows that you are asking him for the wisdom and how to deal with the business of it. 
never make the honey your number one priority. That's the summation of 10 through 13. Never make money your priority. Pursue God, not things. I'm going to repeat that. Pursue God. Do not pursue things. And before you know it, as you pursue God and not pursuing things, you'll notice that it will be a shift. You'll notice that your mind will be changed. You'll notice that your spending habits will be changed. You'll notice that you will do things differently when your mind now is focused on God. It is focused on God. Allow God to bless you. And God, and you show God that you trust him, you honor him, you humble yourself before him, and watch God move on your behalf. Ask God, pray to God for wisdom. And we need to make sure that as we're moving on, I love when we're talking about 14. Common sense and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. We sit there and say, and now what we didn't see is verses 15 to 16 that wasn't in our lesson, but I still want to read a few more. Common sense and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. Because of me, kings reign and rulers make just decrees. Rulers lead with my help and nobles make righteous judgment. That's some of the verses that were in between. I love all who love me. When he says, when wisdom is saying, I love all who love me, remember I said, put that in parallel with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you seek me, I will be there. Wisdom is saying, if you seek my wisdom, I will be there. Our Heavenly Father, if you seek me, I will be there. And that is interesting. We all heard the phrase that common sense is just not so common. But we have to always go to God. Remember, we always have to start and end everything with God. We got to make sure that as we are leaders in whatever avenue that we are leaders, we go to God. We make it about God's business and not our own business. If we want to be true Christians, true leaders, we want to be true fishers of men, true followers of Christ, we have to tell God, I trust you to lead. As any leaders, as we have leaders here in our church, we have leaders on our job, we got to trust God to lead us. And that's what we have to have faith in. So any time we tell God that, Lord, so our prayer should always be as leaders, as Christians, as fishers of men, as we are telling God, God, I trust you, will you help me lead? That's what this scripture uh, is telling us. I will be there. What I love those who love me. Those who search will surely find me. Seek God's wisdom. We want to make sure we're not being arrogant as in verse 13. We don't want to be arrogant type of Christians and arrogant type of leaders and arrogant type of people and prideful people. We have to humble ourselves before God. Amen. And he will take you to new levels of success and wisdom that we have never yes, seen. Yes, to be led means that we have to pray. We have to pray daily. Yes. We have to pray every single day. We got to pray that God helps us so that we can help others. We have to ask God to bless us so that we can bless others. I want to have a newsflash everybody today. Remember, it's not about you. When we absorb that, understand that it's about Jesus. It's always everything we have is up from Jesus. Yes, it doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't matter what house. It's what you did with the car. If the Lord bless you, have you picked up somebody who couldn't get to church? Have you picked up somebody and took them to work because their car was in the shop? Have you picked up somebody because they had to go to school? Have you took somebody to the university because they needed help registering? If God blessed you with the car, what did you do with the car? God didn't bless you for you to just take in and it's just all yours by yourself. If God blessed you, you have to be a blessing to others. Amen. That is what pleases God. Now we're looking at here, I love it. I love everyone who loves me, those who search me. As I said before, one of my favorite scriptures that I have, my hands raised high, is Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the action that we have to take. Yes, it's seeking God first. And then all these things will be added. We have to do the work. We have to seek. Then all things added. Our mindset nowadays is we got twisted. We want all things added and we haven't seeked yet. So we have to go to God and seek God. 
Seek ye first, and then all things will be added. That's what he's talking about in 17. Those who search will surely find me. Seek God first in everything you do. Everything you do, you seek God first. You pray for you pray. And then while you're waiting, you just worship and praise God while you're waiting as God will give you the answers. And so, so, so is that when we're saying here, my gifts are better than gold, even the purest gold, my gifts are better. So now, once again, one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is always to get us to pursue what our heart wants. I know you want that new car. I can show you how to get it. You don't even have to pay for it. And then you're like, what you talking about? Oh, you know, I called you later. Next thing you know, somebody's trying to encourage you to go, uh, what's that, car, car jack and things like that. That's not of God you go around here stealing something that's not yours. When they say, oh, look, you know, we're going to just break in some houses and go steal people's jewelry and break in houses and steal people's stuff. That's not what God is saying. God is saying the wisdom if somebody approaches you is you tell them, I am a child of the Most High King and I'm going to pray for you that you even ask me to do such things. That's what a child of God is saying right here. You cannot let people tempt you into doing wrong things. You cannot allow people to take you away from your relationship with Christ. The Lord says here, my gifts are better than gold. So if somebody approaches you with all type of illegal ways of the gold, and now you turn around and say, well, I want it, so I'm going to go get it. Now your pride and arrogance have made a decision for you. Pride comes before the fall. God does not like pride and arrogance. We serve a God that created gold. So how can you worship gold and not worship the creator of the gold? We have to worship God. We have to trust God. We have to seek God. We have to believe that all things work for those that love God. We have to pursue righteousness. We have to understand that God created the world in his hands. So if he created the world in his hands, all of it belongs to God. So now when we actually thinking about this and, and people pursue things and they go after things uh, the wrong way and they try to trick people and things like that, you seek God. If something comes to you and it discerns your spirit and gets you all feeling funny, you pray about it because that's the testimony I have. I've been approached with all type of those get rich quick stuff and things like that and when it doesn't feel right, I pray about it. Lord, something don't sound right. Lord, this don't feel right. Lord, this is something strange, and it's never, ever failed me, it's never, ever failed me that when even as we are looking at things that might not even be something as bold as maybe theft or robbery, but we even got to look at some of the things that we're presented with. And I thank God right now, our chairman of our deacon board just came in this morning, and one of the things I thank and praise God about is not only does he lead here and is a phenomenal, wonderful man of God, but he actually serves as a career coach. A lot of times I've called him for career-related advice. Dicky Lonnie, what you think about this? Dicky Lonnie, so I pray God, God will tell me, okay, God now delivers a righteous man of God for me to call and ask these questions to. I'll ask God, Lord, this don't feel right. Lord, I don't know if this offer feels right. I don't know if I should be working on this. Something don't feel right about it, and I pray about it. And I just praise and thank you, Deacon Loney, that Deacon Loney has been a person that I can trust with the confidential conversations about career-related things that he'll make very plain, because he'll say, you know what, I saw this before, and let me tell you, this happened good, or that didn't go right. He says, you don't want to go that way, because that wasn't a good way to go that way. That's when you seek God for godly wisdom, because everything God has for you is for you anyway. Your gifts make room. You never have to beg, borrow, steal, go around going crazy, deceitfulness and corruption, stirring up all kinds of strife and mess and things like that to, to say you're doing God's will. Your gifts make room. God will bless you when you seek God first. So when he says, my gifts are better. So when we seek the knowledge of God, when we seek the wisdom of God, that's what God is referring to. Seek me first and know that my gifts are better. The knowledge of it. I look at now what a lot of people are doing. You can either work for a record company, and like I said, I'm going to break this down a little bit for everybody to understand. When he says, my gifts are better. You can work for the record company, or you can own the record company. Amen. And so a lot of times, people get 
oh, I'm gonna give you an advance on your money and contracts, and that's personal. You all know I'm always willing to give a good testimony and share my own because God blessed me. I want to be a blessing to others. I tell people that all day, your signature means something. I don't care what you sign. Do not sign your name to nothing you have not read. And if you do not understand it, you pray and ask God, Lord, I need help, and God will make sure that he provides you some assistance. We need to make sure that we are doing that because the wisdom of God is going to help you discern what's going on. You have people right now who have sold everything because they didn't read a contract nowadays. You got people who have turned around and have been in blockbuster movies that have grossed over five, six hundred million dollars and they got one. How can the movie make 600 million and you only got one of those millions because when they presented you with it, you saw the money and you signed your name and you didn't know what was going on and then you wanted to cry foul play. But if you would have sought God first, God, help me understand this. Help me understand what I need to do. Help me understand. Let me get some right people around me. The Lord will then deliver. It is so interesting when we hear about people who literally and truthfully literally are making money for companies that they could very well own. Amen. We have to understand that. And the wisdom to know that can change the difference. And now we're seeing a shift now with a lot of people around us. I use celebrities because I know a lot of you all can understand and relate to celebrities, but you have a lot of people now who recognize, why would I work for this, new, this company if I'm making music, if they rappers or R&B or whatever? I can own my own label. Now I can write, I can produce, and I can own my own label because over here, I made this company $600 million and they gave me one, but over here now I can do this. If I own my company, now I can reach out and I can hire those in my community. I can provide scholarships. I can help my community out whatever they need the community needs to do. I can hire people that look like us. I can make sure that I'm letting people see the good that can happen. So when God is blessing people, now he can, you can be a blessing to others. So now you have to get that kind of mindset in your mind. So God's blessings and gifts are better because the wisdom of owning the business is different than you just signing your name and letting the business own you. Now, as we are closing, I walk in righteousness and path of justice. Those who love me and hear it well, I will feel their treasures. When we was always told, I walk in righteousness, when you walk in righteousness, you know right versus wrong. Always take the righteous road. We live a time right now where we just go around here and see all type of corrupt behavior in our streets, in our jobs, in our schools, in our churches, in our communities. We just see it. But the Lord tells us to walk in righteousness. He doesn't tell us to become victims of everything. Have the wisdom to know better. Because when you know better, you do better. And if you have fallen, is God saying, repent and turn from your ways. Then I can help you. You have to repent. Because now what you're telling God is, I want to pursue righteousness. I want to do it the right way. And it's interesting then, because if you choose to live your life in accordance to God's word, and you choose to run down the righteous word, I mean, righteous road, then it means you will have to take a stand from time to time for things that you believe in. Stand on God's word all of the time. I have been in very uncomfortable conversations at my corporate job where somebody would ask me and I say, I don't approve of that and that goes against what I believe to be true. That goes against my integrity. Amen. And people will sit there and look at you and say, what? You said that? Yes, I say that. I am not going to involve myself in illegal activities. Amen. And I have no problem standing on that saying that because I do believe that they turn around and find some type of way to give me a pink slip because I'm telling them I'm not going to be uh, subjected to illegal behavior. I trust that God will make a way. So I'm going to always stand up for what's right and stand on God. I am going to be on God's side. It's a song that says, where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? I'm always going to stand on the Lord's side. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand on the Lord's side. Now it says those who love me and hear well and feel their treasure. The best gift and the best promise is that God says, I will go and prepare a place for you in heaven. We are here right now. 
preparing to be in heaven with our heavenly Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are right now preparing to be reunited with Christ and to just sit and speak and worship and say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. That's what we want to say here today. We cannot sit here and just say, well, Lord, here we have now given the path road to wisdom, and we still want to let them go right. And if you have been victim of temptation, if right now there are things going on that goes against what you know God wants you to do, what you do today is stand on God. Ask God to come and help you. Lord, please help me get out of this. I want a right and righteous and relationship with you. Lord, help me. Please come in my heart. I need you, Lord. That's what we have to pray. We have to ask God to help us get out of those situations that's going against it and seeking God's wisdom and how to now be overcomers. God loves us. God protects us. God died for us. And we have to remember, if God's love so much for us that he died for us and he left his Holy Spirit here for us, his grace and his mercy is here for us, why would you not serve a God that always has his eyes set on you, his heart set on you, his love set on you? Every promise of God is true. Every blessing you have is true. Every accident he done kept you from is true. Yes. Because we're not six feet in the ground right now is because of God. How many of us got a testimony where it should have been me dead in the grave somewhere because either A, somebody else's actions, or because B, of my own actions? We always got a testimony for God, and we always have to thank God. And now we sit here with a scripture reading that teaches us the gifts of wisdom. So on top of the fact that God gives us grace and mercy and love, and he's patient with us, and he's kind to us, he tells you, I also have another gift of wisdom for you. So now seek God first. Seek God's wisdom first. Don't get thrown into traps. Now, in conclusion, I want to all of us to just reflect on this. We, we, we reflect on it. We can reflect on it if we want to have a true relationship with God and just tell God, thank you for teaching me the difference between right and wrong. I declare by faith that I want to pursue what is right and righteous for you, and Lord, I want to turn against all that is wrong. I don't, I don't want to seek unrighteous. Lord, I want my success to come from you so that I can tell others what you did, Lord, because it's always about you. Yeah. I do not want to compromise my values, Lord, at all. I know that my life is just bigger than just me. Lord, it's about the Christian community. It's about the people in my community that I serve. It's about the people that are around me. So I know, Lord, as we seek wisdom, Lord, it's not about me. It's about you using me as a vessel for your people. Lord, we understand that. Decisions I make today have a long lasting effect on people around me and my family, those around me and my community. Lord, I declare to take a righteous road today. As I walk down a righteous road today, Lord, I have a clear conscience knowing that you love me. I have a heart that is for you, Lord. And I have a soul that just wants to praise your holy name. Help me, Lord, to live a life that you desire. Not my desires, it's your desire. In closing, let that be your prayer and testimony. I want to live a life that is right by you, Lord. I don't want to live a life that's going left. I don't want to live a life that's going wrong. I want to live that's right for you, Lord. I want to seek you first in everything, Lord, because your wisdom is far more yes. precious, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, and in faith yes, Lord. for all your blessings. Yes. And allow me thank to be you. a blessing to others, Lord. Yes. Allow me to be a vessel for your people, Lord. Use me, Lord. Here I am. Use me. Let that be your testimony today. Ask God to give you the gifts of wisdom and watch your life change. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for morning worship, once again, we want to say thank you to all of the fathers. We want to say happy Father's Day. We love you here at Mount Vernon. We love you. We want you to continue being safe. Please share all of our messages. All our weekly teaching, our recharge, our morning worship, share it with your family, your friends, and your social media family. Share these so you never know who needs to hear this message. Let them know that Mount Vernon is a church where we are Bible teaching, and we want to be there for you and pray for you, and we want to help you have a great